Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video. Thanks so much for taking the time to join me here today. I uh, just want to apologize in advance if the sun gets super glary. It's quite windy up high. It's been raining non-stop for about two weeks. Uh, but we've got this break, so I'm outside sat on this rather damp bench. Uh, and I want to have a chat about getting outside and how those of us who are passionate about getting outside can help to protect the landscape for future generations to come. So here at Spend More Time in the Wild, we're all about getting outside for the benefit of mental and physical health. And we also believe in the power of connection. So we're building this worldwide community, we're building up the tribe and the connection, we believe uh, in the power of connection between one another, so individuals and community, and also the power of connection with nature. And that's what we're gonna be talking about more specifically today, um, is how we can, as a community of outdoor enthusiasts, um, who are passionate about the natural world, how we can help to protect it for future generations to come. So you may or may not have heard of the countryside code. I'm actually just getting a little bit burnt right now. That is a very intense sun. <laughs> um, coming back, right, countryside code. So it was derived in 2004 from the country code and it is a set of sort of governmental guidelines or rules um, to help enhance the enjoyment of people using the outdoors and again to protect it for future generations to come. So it's broken down into three sort of sections. They're quite snappy, quite easy to remember. So there's respect, protect, and enjoy. And what I thought we'd do today is just break down each of those sections. Um, so much of it is common sense, it's unbelievable. If you like nature and you're getting out in nature because you like it, you're probably doing most of these things instinctively because you want to protect it and just not be disrespectful of it so it's it's great it's so common sense um, but I wanted to run through it anyway because obviously there's a lot of folk uh, on this channel who are new to getting outside they're new to walking and hiking so welcome it's so fantastic that you're here um, but also you know there might be some things in there that you weren't aware of so let's delve right into it so starting with respect then so respect is broken down into sort of kit two sort of subheadings and then there's more headings underneath that, more different points. So respect is respect, being respectful of the community and other users when you're outside, uh, using the natural landscape for whatever reason, and we'll break that down in a minute. And it's also leaving gates and property and machinery and that sort of thing as you find them. So coming back to community. All right, we're in our car, we're riding our bicycle to the start of our adventure. We're going for a day hike in the Brecon Beacons. Okay, so driving along little country road. Oh, there's a bit of grass growing up the middle. I'm not gonna be bombing along at 60 miles an hour despite the fact that it's the national speed limit. Really important when you're on the little roads to be respectful of other users. You might not be able to see them, they might not be able to see you. You're probably gonna see each other at the last possible point when you're hitting the brakes. There you go, you're skidding on some mud and disaster. Nobody wants that. Be nice and drive respectfully. So if you come across a cyclist, it's just giving them enough space and not forcing your way through as people seem to do around here. <laughs> um, and if you come across a horse, it's giving way to the horse as well. Also, if you're on a bike, it's giving away to the horse as well. So it's sort of like a hierarchy of, of respect, um, but just generally, if there's a horse or a bike involved and you're in a vehicle, who's gonna come off worse? Think very carefully about that. Act wisely. <laughs> Uh, okay, so great. So we are at the road where we want to park our vehicle to begin our walk. There's the signpost over there. That's the way we want to go. But where do we leave our car? Well, we're not going to leave it in front of somebody's property or in front of a gate that could block access to a field or to a farmyard. So again, just sort of thinking about the people who live and work in the landscape that you're just exploring for the day and making sure you're not leaving your car somewhere that could potentially ruin somebody's day. So simple as that, really, again, common sense. If you have any respect for other people, you're gonna be doing that stuff anyway. So up next with respect is kind of really only one other main thing. And that is if you come across, say a farm crossing and some cows are crossing the path or crossing the road that you might be walking on or cycling on or riding on, it's just waiting for the cows and sheep to go across. Um, or if they're herding them across the moorlands, it's just staying back and allowing them to do their job you don't want to be startling any sheep dogs or any sheep and making anything more difficult than it has to be. Um, so just be impatient with that. Don't go toot in your horn. Just find some inner peace, take some deep breaths. It's all going to be fine and you'll be on your way very, very quickly. So <laughs> respect, simple as that. So let's get on to the other side of respect. And that is again, a lot of common sense stuff. 
is leaving gates as you find them. So I think anybody who's sort of grown up in the outdoors, this is kind of like one of the number one things that you will default do. If you go through a gate that was shut, you're gonna close it after you, simple as that. And that means hook it back up as you found it. Sometimes this really frustrates me because they're so difficult to do. And I'm like, why farmers just put some oil on this or change this gate handle, but doesn't matter, gotta do it, gotta shut it. You don't wanna be letting some sheep out to somewhere that they shouldn't be, where they could get lost, because that is a farmer's money, livelihood, right there. That animal is an animal, it's a life, but it's also worth money to that farmer. So just being respectful of that. Same goes for property um, and machinery. If you're walking through a farmyard, it's not tinkering with stuff. It's not being like, that's a nice tire, I'm gonna take that home with me. Not that it's gonna fit in your backpack, so I don't know why you'd think that. <laughs> um, so just leaving machinery and property as you find them. Then of course, if you're walking on a path, so if you have ever walked in the Lake District National Park or if you've done any of the major mountains in the UK, so perhaps you've gone up Ben Nevis, the highest mountain in the British Isles up in Scotland, um, you will have seen that the main sort of paths are paved. So there's big slabs of rocks all the way up or a lot of the way up. Um, and this is due to, or they're in place as a result of a lot of hard, manual labor by rangers and by volunteer groups and all they're trying to do is prevent erosion of the natural landscape so they're putting those slabs down in order to protect the path from the heavy footfall so if you are on a path that is slabbed or not slabbed if there is basically a boundary on the path that you're in it's trying to stick to that if you're walking on the edges of the boundary you might just be one person yes but say 20 30 40 thousand people use that boundary or that footpath sorry each year that's a lot of feet and that path is going to get wider very very quickly you're preventing the growth of different flora you're potentially encroaching into or encroaching sorry into uh, nesting bird habitats or whatever whatever there's all sorts of different reasons but basically stick to the path if it's muddy you're outside what do you expect so just get muddy deal with it um, and just try not to grow the path any more than necessary so the same goes for gates and dry stone walls and hedges that you might come across so field boundaries um, if you find anything that's shut or tied shut that perhaps shouldn't be so there is actually a public right of way and you can't get through so you have to go over the wall i'm using that as an example because that happened to me recently on the rob roy way you can actually report that to the local authority now you don't need to be aggressive and uptight about it even though it can be very inconvenient and actually quite dangerous um, but just letting them know can be really helpful because if there is a dispute going on between the farmer and the council with the public right of way they don't want it there they're locking gates trying to block walkers because oh there's walkers um, then yeah that's not great really so you can just sort of feed into that to keep the public right of way there um, <laughs> but the other part of this is if you do have to go over walls or whatever again it's not just your feet not just your hands 20 30 40 thousand people going over that wall dry stone walls are incredible parts of our landscape there just so significant to our heritage. They can be hundreds and hundreds of years old. So it's just trying to not do that. Just don't damage the walls. Don't cut fences to get through them. Um, find a way around. You've got a big brain there. I believe in you. So that is pretty much it with regards to boundaries. And then of course, same goes for significant sites of archeological historical significance, monuments, um, burial mounds. Just don't break them. Just look at them, take pictures, um, you know, do a bit of writing, drawing, but just don't break them, basically. Simple as that. I told you it's all common sense. So that is respect. Now let's have a chat about protect. So protect then, let's have a chat. So protect is all about leaving no trace and dogs, dog control. I'm a big fan of dogs, so we're gonna get into that quite cautiously. But first of all, let's have a chat about leaving no trace. So again, absolute common sense. Whatever you pack in, pack it out. Did you find that loo roll growing on a tree? Did you? Did you? Come on, really? Then no. So probably pack it out. Um, if you don't want to pack it out, find a toilet. <laughs> if you don't want to find a toilet, use a leaf, use some moss, use some natural thing that you can leave back in the environment. Some people say to light loo roll. Uh, yes, go crazy, but make sure that is absolutely out. Make sure you're not doing that near dry grass or peat. Uh, don't light loo roll where you're going to light a big fire. <laughs> Simple as that. So just making sure you've got some bags to pack it out. Um, there is a lot of debate about loo roll to be honest some people are like well we gotta go we gotta go um, but I personally think packing it out is really important especially on the busier trip well, in fact you're going into nature why would you want to leave loo roll in a landscape that you're going to enjoy someone else is going to come along and see your soiled loo roll um, I don't want to get into the debate, debate of that I'm getting into the debate and I shouldn't be you have your own opinion I have mine but I would strongly encourage you to pack it out same goes for litter was that cereal bar growing on a tree? No, pack it out. 
uh, orange peels, banana skins. They're not native to our country. They can take up to five, six years to biodegrade. And if they're just sat there on top of the mountain, you know, Helvellyn, uh, Ben Nevy, so I've been up all these different mountains this year. You always find banana skins just stuck within the rock. Those are gonna be there for another five, six years. The higher you go, the longer it takes to biodegrade. If it doesn't grow there, don't leave it there. Simple as that. So we've touched on fires and not causing fires. We've touched on taking litter home with you and food that you're not gonna eat, not feeding it to wild animals or leaving it for wild animals. And the final part of leave no trace is if you really like a flower, you can take a picture of it. You don't have to pick it because if you leave it there, think about the number of smiles that that flower is gonna generate. The people that are walking past, the feelings of warmth and joy and, and peace and belonging that people are gonna get from that flower or that interesting leaf or whatever it is. It's, we are so blessed with modern technology and I think it's really important to embrace that uh, and, and, and one of the benefits of that is we don't have to pick everything that we see. We don't have to take home every rock that we like the look of. Absolutely it can be nice to take souvenirs. I mean I have a fine collection of sticks and rocks and feathers and leaves and everything. I mean my room is just a big natural history museum. <laughs> um, but you know I do believe it's very important to make a judgment as to whether or not you taking that away and then hundreds of thousands of views taken away, things like that. I mean, what's gonna be left, you know? So it's just making that little that little assessment, that judgment there. Um, there's a great Buddhist quote that I'll put up on the screen now um, that for me summarizes that so perfectly. I mean, I can't remember exactly how it goes, but if you think something's beautiful, it's leaving it. That's the, that's the best summary I have. The quote is right there, so read and enjoy. Um, right, so the other half of protect is basically to do with dogs. So if your dog poops, it's pick it up. Um, so this is an interesting debate. Some people say stick it, flick it, or flick it, stick it. No, use a stick and flick it. There we go. Um, so as long as it's not on the path, then some people say that's fine. And I don't know, man, it's debatable. Again, like I get animals poop. Like if farmers are going around picking up cow poo, I mean, that's a big bag to pick up a cow poo, you know? Uh, so. Uh, that's a big debate, but some people are absolutely religiously will pick up every single morsel of poop that their dog does. Um, other people will flick it off the path if it's a you know, less commonly used path or it's already like sheep poo, cow poo, horse poo, everything's going on. Um, hopefully no human poo though, that would be a real issue right there. <laughs> um, so that's just, a, just one thing there. Keeping your dog on leads around livestock. Uh, some farmers say they have to be on a lead, not under cl close control. Dogs have instincts, we have instincts, you know? If there is a really nice yogurt in the fridge, you know, I do like a good soya coconut yogurt. If that's in the fridge, I'm gonna struggle to say no to that. I mean, there you go, confession time. So same with the dogs. If a dog sees something that runs, it might not know what to do uh, other than chase it, you know? Um, it's like Penny, our Westie. Occasionally she would, she used to, she can't run anymore, um, but occasionally she used to go after sheep. She wouldn't have a clue what to do, uh, but she's distressing that animal and that's not fair on the animal. And also if the farmers get agitated, they do in many places have a right to shoot them. And that absolutely terrifies me. I would not like my dog to be shot, thank you very much. So Penny goes on the lead, simple as that. Nowadays she just doesn't, I mean, she looks like a sheep. The sheep are like, why are you on a lead, sheepy? Um, and so we, yeah, keep her on a lead, simple as that. So keep dogs on, on a lead or close control. Um, and uh, also, you know, if you are around nesting birds, uh, that's another thing as well as livestock and young livestock. Uh, it's not even so much about the livestock safety. Um, you know, if you have a little Yorkshire Terrier who is yapping and chasing a cow, that cow could quite easily stamp on your beloved Yorkshire Terrier. I have a Yorkshire Terrier, he doesn't, he, he doesn't know what to do around cows anyway, so, uh, but I wouldn't want that to happen. So it's safety on both parts. Simple as that. Keep them on a lead, under close control around livestock and nesting animals. Same goes for keeping them on a path. If we've got to keep to the path, um, it's kind of keeping your dogs on a path. Not only could there be bog or hidden situations and things that they could get caught up in, um, you know, it's just, again, trying to prevent erosion, trying to prevent the dis dis disturbance of uh, flora and, and animal species as well. It is really worth me mentioning actually when it comes to path. You may have heard of something called open access. So this is basically land where you can wander wherever you want. Uh, much of Scotland is open access, for example, many areas of outstanding natural beauty, certain points in say the Lake District, above a certain height, so open access, or open access even. Um, so obviously there is less uh, 
rigidness around sticking on paths or keeping your dogs on paths but again if there is a path you may as well use it let's help protect these mountains for future generations to come so talking of being out and about we're having a good time let's talk about enjoyment so the final section of uh, the countryside coast we've got respect protect and enjoy so enjoyment is all about enhancing your experience of when you're out and about on the trail doing whatever outdoor activity that you're doing we've already touched on a lot of these things anyway so the first one is basically planning ahead and being prepared and the second is knowing rights of access uh, different signings and, and what they mean so again if you're interested in seeing a video on that then please do um, check that out uh, or let me know sorry in the comments below more than happy to do that uh, in fact I'm going to do that anyway I think that would be really really great but the more of you guys that want me to do that then the quicker I will get on that um, so when it comes to planning ahead it's just making sure you've got all the right gear making sure you know how to contact contact uh, the mountain rescue or the coast guard if ever you need to um, making sure you've uh, you know checking the weather as well if there's a storm coming you don't really want to be walking into that so how can you stay safe uh, perhaps navigation might be something that you want to work on why not consider looking at doing a navigation course there's the national navigation award scheme or the mountain leader scheme lots of different places that you can get training uh, and, and practice you know night navigation what happens if you get stuck out at night time doesn't need to be scary doesn't need to be intense but it can really really be so helpful to have all of these different tools and skills in our back pocket should ever a situation arise the same goes with first aid what are you going to do if you get a blister what are you going to do if you come across a climber who's fallen off a crag who should have stayed on the crag um, you know or a mountain biker who's got a puncture or all these different things you know the outdoor every corner you go around there is an adventure waiting to happen it depends on your attitude and how you're going to approach that so having those skills can be really really helpful to make sure everybody's having a good time in the outdoor space and speaking of having a good time, you might be having a good time out and about on the trail, but your friends and families or loved ones, relatives might be worrying about you because perhaps you've watched some of my videos and you've just decided to go and yomp across Scotland. No worries, but make sure you leave a plan. Uh, there might not always be phone signal. Definitely don't take for granted that there will be phone signal. So just leaving a little itinerary for somebody. Me and my family, we're quite good on this. Um, I send pictures of my itinerary to my friends and my family. Uh, as often as possible, I'll touch base if I'm on a multi-day long distance trail. Uh, and then everybody knows that I'm fine and I know that they're fine and the world is fine. Never mind Brexit. Right, so that is it. That's the countryside code. Obviously, we covered a lot of stuff there. Um, I just hope this has given you some food for thought so you can sort of debate whether you're doing as many of these things as you as you can, as you feel you want to. Um, but I, I do think it's a fine collection of rules to help to make sure everybody's happy. Uh, it sort of mitigates a lot of conflict, I think. You know, um, for example, my local patch, you know, our mountain biking community is not great with walkers they won't give way they'll just speed on past and quite often my dogs have nearly been hit and that's quite distressing same when I'm on a bike road users around here oh gosh just don't <laughs> um, it's, it is upsetting you know and it, and it puts you off um, and I think that's such a shame because more and more people could benefit with spending time outside and so I think the more we can live through our actions the more we can demonstrate how to be respectful of others through our actions not necessarily our words then the bigger the impact that we can have. So respect, protect and enjoy. And when it comes to enjoyment, guys, enjoy your next adventure. Thanks so much for watching and stay wild. I'll see you in the next video.